Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of RGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're looking at the 13th topic of the syllabus, excretion in humans. And uh, we're looking at the highlighted sections here. Um, I, I'll make a new video of the last uh, bits and pieces at the end here, just because I don't think I'll have time to cover everything today. But um, so have a quick read through that and then we will begin the video. So what is excretion? Well, excretion is the removal of toxic materials uh, or the waste products of metabolism or the substances in excess of requirements from the body. So um, if they ever ask a question about the definition of excretion, you'll probably have to just memorize this word by word and uh, just throw it out there and you should be sweet. Um, it's just important for you to understand that, you know, at, at what you excretion is not just about removing poisonous stuff as the definition suggests. Um, it's also about removing what might potentially be good for us, but we have too much of. So for example, proteins are good for us, but if we eat too much protein and we have too much of it, unfortunately we need to break it down. And we'll be looking at that in detail in the next slide. So that links us to the role of the liver. Well, first of all, it's important that you understand the liver is important for assimilation of amino acids. That's basically um, combining amino acids um, in the right order to make specific proteins and as we all know proteins are vital for our survival. Uh, and second of all, uh, the liver is important for the breakdown of the nitrogen containing parts of excessive amino acids, otherwise we call that deamination. And um, the thing about amino acids is that if we have too much of it, unfortunately we can't store it. Okay, so there's no storage system involved here. So if we have too much of it, we need to break it down. And the reason it can't be stored is because it has these nitrogen containing parts um, inside the molecules of amino acids. And so therefore we need to actually break it down, especially break down the nitrogen containing parts of it. And eventually that turns into urea, which is excreted by the kidneys. And so here's a cycle of what we call the urea cycle. You're not expected to know any of this. I just decided to chuck it on there um, so that you could get uh, an understanding of the bigger picture. Okay, but um, so this links us to the urinary system. Okay, so we, we've broken down the proteins. We've, we've made urea, which is essentially poisonous. It's a waste product like carbon dioxide. And you know carbon dioxide is a um, is a waste product that's uh, excreted via our lungs. Well, we need a way to excrete the urea uh, that we've essentially created from deamination. Okay, well, so urea is excreted as what we call urine, and you should be familiar with urine. Um, and so what is the difference then between urea and urine? Well, urea is just basically the actual molecule mo molecule sorry and urine is what we get when we've got mineral salts and urea that's dissolved in water so it's basically a solution so uh, from the liver we get the urea that eventually comes into the kidneys and from the kidneys uh, it goes out through the ureta of either side and um, here the urine has already been made um, as it kind of dissolves in water and stuff like that and uh, it goes to the bladder where urine is stored and uh, eventually passes out through the urethra. Okay, so one thing about urine is the volume and the concentration of it can depend on several factors. For example, temperature and exercise. Well, when, when the temperature is really hot and when you exercise a lot, uh, you, I don't know if you might have kind of uh, realized it already, but your urine becomes more concentrated, so more yellow, um, and less, you, 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 you excrete less, so you urinate less. Um, and the reason for that is because in hot temperatures and when you exercise a lot, you get more dehydrated more frequently because, especially because you sweat a lot. So um, a lot of water is lost um, through your skin, therefore not much water is left inside your body um, and therefore when you urinate, there's not much water in it. So the volume is less and eventually it's more more concentrated as well. And uh, conversely, um, uh, if, you, if you intake, ha if you drink more water throughout the day and you are really, really hydrated, that means you've got more water 
uh, circulating inside your body. So when you uh, when you urinate, it'll be more in volume and less concentrated. Okay, it'll be much more dilute. And um, so it's important for us to kind of look through the structure of a kidney. Okay, so we know that uh, the urea is made in the liver and then it goes to the kidney. But what uh, what are the details of that? Okay, so you've got the uh, you got the kidney here on the most left, and then if you zoom up on that, you've got your different layers. You've got your cortex, which is the outer part, and then the medulla, which is the inner part. Now, I understand that this diagram might be a little bit more complex than that than what you imagined, and that's true. You actually don't really need to know much of this. But I thought this diagram was a very good uh, diagram just to give you a brief understanding and an overview of what things are like in actuality. So so bear with me first of all. So um, you've got your outer portion, the cortex, and the middle portion of the kidney, the medulla, which is the most inner part. And um, within those two layers, you have something called a nephron, otherwise known as a kidney tubule, which you guys will be um, referring to. That's what you guys call nephrons at this stage, I think, kidney tubules. Um, and although this is the diagram of just one nephron, you have a whole heap of nephrons throughout the um, entirety of the cortex. Uh, sorry, not the cortex, but the kidney. Okay, It's just one example. And if you were to zoom up on that nephron, you've got a whole lot of different um, stuff here to look at. But most importantly, just take a look at the glomerulus, which is the... Uh, circular capsular part here. Okay, That's all you really need to know, and the rest... Um, uh, yeah, don't worry about trying to memorize uh, the different structures and stuff. That's for next year, not this year. Okay, so this is a basic understanding of um, an overview, basically, of how things are like. But uh, in reality, what you as students in your course need to know is a bit more simpler. Um, so this is, once again, the structure of a kidney, the outer part, the cortex, and the inner part, the medulla. And you've got your pyramid that's close to the pelvis, which um, eventually links out into the ureter. The most important structures that you need to be aware of and need to be able to like recognize and label and stuff is the cortex, the medulla, and then the ureter, which is specifically what the syllabus says, okay? But you can learn the rest if you want. Uh, it's not, I mean, the diagram's not that hard. But, um, and as I said, you've got these nephrons or kidney tubules that kind of um, are located within the cortex and the medulla. And if you were to zoom up on it, you have this top part here where um, it's not labeled here, but it's called the glomerulus. And it's like a little um, capsular space that the uh, blood vessels go into in loops and eventually go back out. Okay, so the glomerulus is really important at a very basic level. Um, you just kind of need to know that it's a filtration device. So there's... As I said, uh, urea is transported from the liver to the kidney, obviously through the blood. The blood is how everything is transported through too. So um, eventually, essentially how it happens is uh, from the liver, it's uh, the urea and stuff is all in the bloodstream and the entry into the kidneys is basically through here, uh, the glomerulus um, through these kidney tubules. And so the blood um, the blood vessels kind of come into loops into this enclosed space um, uh, and this whole thing's called the glomerulus as I said and blood is coming through at quite high pressures okay and what happens is uh, the this uh, glomerulus this capsule kind of acts as a filtration device because it allows certain molecules in but certain molecules out so well not out but it just doesn't allow it to go through so it's a um, things that are small enough, for example, urea, they can easily pass through the boundaries and into the tubule, into this uh, space here. So it can water, so it can a lot of other minerals and stuff like that. But when it's like, when things get too big, for example, red blood cells, big white blood cells, proteins, then it filters it out, okay? Um, so only things that are small enough can actually enter the tubule, into the kidneys. And what happens is that once it's in, okay, um, this the rest of the parts here, the rest of the tubule plays a role in reabsorbing the things that we uh, we need. Okay, so a lot of that stuff like urea, water, and stuff like that probably uh, gets 
uh, filtrated through into this tube. But um, if we, for example, kind of need the water back, then the reabsorption happens along this tubule here. Notice that you actually don't even need to know any of these labels here, PCT, DCT, just ignore all of it. Just know that this top part is the glomerulus and the rest of the part which is just like a tubule where reabsorption happens. So uh, at a very basic level, glomerulus, uh, this is where filtration, ultra filtration we call it, happens, uh, where things that are small enough at high pressures get forcefully released, um, where the uh, capsule here, the glomerulus only allows small things to pass through, for example urea, and once it's through, uh, there's a lot of things like minerals and water and urea of course inside the tubules and we absorb back a lot of those things, for example the water goes back out, um, some minerals if you want to take it back, it goes back out, like glucose maybe if, if it came out it goes back out, and um, but of course, the one thing we don't want to reabsorb is urea, because that's poisonous essentially, and it's the uh, it's the whole purpose of this urinary system. Okay, so urea stays in, and we eventually excrete it as uh, it goes through the collecting duct and out through the tubule, and eventually into the pelvis and the ureta, and out into the bladder, and eventually into our toilets. Okay, so I hope that uh, was a good overview of the topic, and. Um, I will finish off the topic in the next video, where we will be covering some other stuff. Um, but it won't be it won't be as long as this video, probably maybe two or three minutes. But um, yeah, we'll see. Awesome. So once again, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.